All right, we'll start on our backs. Strap. Oh, pull your knees to your chest. Just close your eyes and take a moment to check in with your body. And if you need to, like if it's been a while, you can do this the whole time. Just stop when you need to, rest when you need to, in a therapeutic way, in a, in a, a mindful way. Place your left foot on the floor and strap up your right ball, the ball of your right foot. Hold the strap comfortably in your hands so not gripping it too tightly. Let your shoulders rest and your elbows rest on the floor. And give just a little bit of pressure to that pull with your hands and meet it with your foot so that you've got just a nice, comfortable stretch through the calf and possibly more. Rolling down with that right buttock so that it's not elevated off the ground. I'm gonna turn on an angle so I can see you guys a little bit better. And if your knee is bent, why? Like I'm not against it. In fact, bending, I just tried bending my knee just to see what that would feel like. Interesting. Um, but if it is, straight work on straightening it and then bending it so that you have more of a dynamic movement. It's also possible that your knee is bent and you don't realize it. Um, often I'll catch my reflection and notice that I have a knee bend that I'm not aware of. Think of opening the back of the knee. That's often a place where it's caught. See if the stretch wants to go a little deeper now. <clears throat> Keep pressing down through the right buttocks so that you're isolating the back of the leg. Now add internal and external rotation. Rotating the leg to the, just in the socket, to the right and to the left. Try not to wiggle your hips. And if you're looking at me, you'll see I am definitely wiggling my hips. I'm doing exactly what I asked you not to do. <laughs> so I'm trying to squeeze my outer hips so that they stay still. And then rotate just the leg. Externally rotate it. Gather the strap in the right hand and let the leg come to the right. Grounding down through your left butt at the same time. So try not to topple off to the right. Taylor, grab the strap with me that one. Let your shoulders relax. And breathe here. If there's a slight knee bend, do the same dynamic thing we did with the leg straight up, bending and straightening. To start to tease the groin muscles open. And do try to keep your left butt grounded. Hoist the leg back up. And if you have your block available, have it on your left side. Shift your hips over to the right. Then we're gonna take a full twist here. Take that leg all the way across, come onto that outer left hip. You can put the block underneath your right leg. So we're in a spinal twist. Reach your right arm open. Holding the foot with a strap, rolling your outer right hip away from the waist. Turn the head to the right. Reach through that right arm. Just, you can get the whole upper back to lie flat. Just 
Send breath through any area that feels full of tension. Reach through your right arm and let it pull you onto your back. We're going to remove the strap, put it just to the side. Come into a figure four, crossing your right ankle over the upper left knee, lower left thigh area. Reach behind the legs and pull softly. Uh, check in with the obvious places like the jaw and shoulders for tension. And then release your hands, but keep your legs. And we're going to hold this just using the power of our legs. Pressing the shin into the, or pushing the legs into one another here. You're trying to send your right knee away from you as you pull your left knee toward you. And you're just using those muscles without the help of the hands. That may feel weird if you're not, it does for me because I'm very habitualized to using my hands here. So right away, my left hip flexor is tired, which is kind of interesting to know. But to add another dynamic component, take your hands behind your head and a little crunch is here, lifting head and shoulders up off the ground. As you lift your hips off the floor as well, we'll do 10, nine. I'm exhaling when I come up, but I'm talking, so it's hard for me to coordinate. Eight, seven, six, five, four, and three, and a two, and lift it. Relax your head down, uncross your legs, hug both knees in, enjoy a little, Side to side rocking, just a little side to side. Nice. Let your feet flop down to the floor so the feet are planted underneath your knees. Interlace your fingers, reach your arms all the way back behind you, and try to squeeze your head, pushing down through the floor with your feet, and then arms back up straight over the chest. Ten of these. Nine, eight, seven. Try to keep the arms long and the side bodies long. And four, and three, and a two. Reach it back. Squeezing your head, lengthening your ribs, your sides, and then release the hands. Bend the elbows out to the side of mine with your shoulders, knuckles um, facing the back room, back of the room, pushing the elbows down into the floor, sliding doors with the shoulder blades. Just, let's actually do 20 of these. Elbows down, 19, 18, 17, isolating the shoulder blades. Five, four, three, two, and one. Relax. Breathe across your chest. Notice that open more room in the ribs to breathe. The lungs have a little more space. It's like we went from main cabin comfort to extra extra comfort, like extra, extra leg room, extra lung room here. And then place your fists on your face, right on your temples. Thumbs pointing down toward your chin, elbows all the way up to the floor, and then all the way together. All the way down to the floor, all the way together, 25 of these. 
And for me, this is really loud. There's a lot of pop. Four, three, one more, and relax the arms. Uh, and notice your breathing again. And did that open up even more space, maybe in the back of the body? And this helps, I mean, when we get more lung space, lung capacity, we get more oxygen. And this helps everything circulate. And really simply put in the whole theory of Chinese medicine is where the blood flows, energy flows. So chi and blood are moved together. When there's stagnation, that's where, that's where disease sets in. And if it's there long enough, it really becomes a problem. Okay, switching sides. We're going to grab that strap and loop up the left foot. Hold it loosely in your hands so that you're not adding tension in your shoulders or jaw. Right foot is plugged into the floor. And play with the dynamic of the strap on the foot so that you have a gentle tension there. So you, you feel something. Roll your left glute toward the ground. And if your knee is bent, play with straightening and bending it for a bunch of reasons, but also mostly just so you can learn what the, what the difference is or what is holding it back. Maybe you're protecting something. If that's the case, change the vector. Don't pull so hard, have it, have it at a lower angle. Keep the leg straight. Be able to straighten the leg if you can. If you're not paying attention, your shoulders probably will start to take it on some of the tension, which is also just good information how the whole body is connected. Start to rotate with a straight leg, internally and externally. And we wanna isolate the movement to the femur bone inside the hip socket, rather than hula hooping the hips or wiggling, squiggling the hips. Keep those as still as you can. Just get inside the hip bowl, the bowl of the hip, like a mortar and pestle. Land on external rotation and let that leg go out to the left. Try to cinch your right side down. Try to staple that right butt to the ground. Stand up through that left leg. And maybe work on bending and straightening the leg here. If it's particularly tight, it may be more effective to have a dynamic movement than just static movements or just static hold. I vote the bike. Keep that right butt down. Breathe.
image of just my brain floating in the saline solution of my skull. If my brain itself is just in this nice bathtub, like at a spa, getting a rest, letting all those electrodes, all those neurons, just have a bit of a time out in, in the sweetest way. Not calling upon it for a few moments, just letting the body breathe. I think our head, just like our computers, it gets hot. So if we burn it out, it needs to be in you know, a little bit of that beta state so it can rest. Pull the leg up. Let the hips shift over, move them over to the left. I'm going to put the block under mine as it comes over to the right side. Left arm opens out to the side. This is always where I'm so tight. Right here. This is for me, it's serratus. It's actually, you know what? I think it's the lat. Outer left hip rolls away from the waist. Try to get both your shoulders down on the good crystal down on the floor. Look out to the left and breathe up into the chest or wherever you have the most tension. All the stress, whatever you've been going through, whatever you've been putting your brain through, yourself through, just let the body rest, let the floor hold you. Just for the time we have together, turn it over to Mother Earth. Let's just let it spill into her, turn it over. And pull oh, the leg back up, give it a nice pull, and then you're going to cross your left ankle over the upper right knee, reach behind, I'm just moving the strap off my foot, reach behind your right leg and gently pull, getting into the position here of tension of that left knee moving forward and that right knee coming closer to the chest, and then release the hands and do it just with the legs. Shoulders are easy. Jaws relax, tongue is soft. So mom has that right hip flexor begin to begin to tire. How long does that take before you start to feel the work of this shape? Maybe it holds strong. And then adding a little more dynamic movement here, hands interlace. I'm switching up from my regular grip, just switching the lacing and lifting and lowering. Just do 10 here. Exhaling as you come up. Try to preserve the shape of the legs. Four and three and two and one. Good. Uncross the legs and hug both knees in. Grab your block if you have it nearby. Put it between your just above the knees, um, legs are in tabletop position and start to squeeze the block with your inner thigh, like lower thighs. Don't hurt your knee, don't hurt your leg. 
We're trying to turn on the adductors, those inner groin muscles. 10 more. Three, two, and one. Now focus on squeezing the block. Arms out into a T. Lower your heels all the way to the mat. And then back to, or floor, and then back up to table. Try to squeeze the block for the whole motion. Five of these. I'm exhaling as I go from the heels on the ground back to the table. And I'm getting a nice lower belly activation that I'm super into right now. And then stay with that or add on hands back behind the head as you, um, let's see, wait, as you lower the heels with the head and head goes down as the knees come back up. Wait, do I have that backwards? I that backwards, sorry. So as the knees are in, legs are in table with the head, as the heels come down, head lowers. That makes more sense. Okay, lift here. Much more sense. Okay, 10. Try to keep focused on the block. Eight. Seven, hopefully those inner thighs are feeling it too. Six. It's kind of a, feels really exciting. Five. Four and three, hopefully for you too. Two, lift and hold, squeeze that block, tummy to the floor. Oh, and relax down, feet to the ground, hands to the bum, arch in the low back. So just a little anterior tilt, tailbone forward, and you're just squeezing the glutes, not tucking the tailbone. 10, trying to get those glutes isolated. Squeeze the block too, if you can. Five, four, three, two, one. And we squeeze the block, we'll go back to those pullovers, arms overhead. So hands to the sky, arms all the way back while squeezing the block. Eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, reach it back, squeeze, and release. Come on over to your side and up onto your hands and knees. I'm going to turn to the side just so you can see. So you're on all fours, my quadruped, but you're going to walk your hands slightly forward of that. Then you're gonna bring your weight forward of that. So your low back is kind of hanging out there on its own. Shoulders are, are over the wrist, shoelace side down. Drop the head, lift the tailbone. Slink, let everything slump, kind of slunch. Slump, down. The collarbones are lifted. Shoulders are rolling back. Head is down, sit bones are lifted. Uh huh. And it, if you're me, it's scary. I don't know about it if you're you. For me, it's really, this is probably one of the scarier challenges for me. But it's been pretty life-changing. Bringing fluids into that lower back, which can be such a burnt out area. So, so dry. And there's brain there. There's so, there's whole spine there disseminating information and it gets all dry and then that affects, that affects mood as much as anything. And actually I really feel like it's related to bladder infections like um, kidneys get hot, kidneys start, stop performing as well and it ends up we end up with toxins in the bladder and irritation. Just another few seconds here. Taylor, can, I might not be demoing it well enough, but if you can bring the weight even more forward over the wrist. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, it's, there's, yeah, it's 
Okay, and then we're gonna slink those hips back, let them just slide to the heels, arms stay forward. Mm. And do go for the stretch if you can. Try to keep those arms straight as your hips slide back so you're getting that length. We've already set the table to be able to really breathe into our back here, into our back lungs. And especially if you're tender in your spine, you've got some tenderness going on, get that breath moving, get those fluids moving. Feeding all that tissue. One of the first things that happens when our back hurts is the breath gets locked out of it. The muscles tighten and it's very hard to get breath into the area that is required for the pain to go away. Pull through your hands, let it draw you forward. And if you're not set up well on your mat, turn yourself around, get your blocks where you can utilize them. We're gonna come down onto our forearms, interlace the fingers and take a forearm plank. If you need your knees down, um, put your shoelace side of your foot down too, or have your toes tucked under and have your legs lifted. We're gonna hold this shape. Shoulders are forward toward the wrist, back is wide, tummy in, heels up. Good job, breathe. Try to make sure your neck is not being challenged too much here. Put the work into the lats instead. Nice, everybody. Come down onto your bellies. March your arms just a little bit forward for sphinx. Palms are turned down. Push down through your forearms. Roll your shoulder heads back as you lift your chin. Keep your face pointed up and centered, but move your eyes toward the right. Be where you are. As that vagal nerve resets. Whoa. And then face stays the same. Eyes move over to the left. And they're up by design. And that may also trigger a yawn or a swallow as the body resets, as the nervous system resets. Eyes back to the middle when that happens. And then roll down. Rest your head on your hands. Um, tucking the chin slightly here, lengthening the tailbone, if you can, toward the back of the mat. Breathing into that space you just opened up on your lower back. So if I were there, I'd have my hand on your lower back and I'd be pushing your tailbone or um, sacrum toward the tailbone for that natural rocking chair movement of the pelvis here. It's this subtle and you're sending your breath into that panel. Let's make it even more Easy. Take the knees a little bit apart and windshield wipe your feet side to side so that area can loosen up more. And then relax your feet down, your legs down, legs straight. Check again, check that you're really able to breathe into that low back. I want it nice and supported with breath. And really this may be enough. So we're gonna add on to this. We're gonna scale up, but you can always just stay here and breathe. This is extremely therapeutic. It's medicinal for your back. Stretch your arms out in front of you, a little bit wider than your hands are a little bit wider than your shoulders. And see if you can claw your fingers out a little bit more so that there's a, a little bit more of a stretch. 
Lift your left leg, keeping the legs straight if you can and the hips level. And then lift your right arm and maybe lift the head. If that's too much pressure, leave the head on the floor or don't lift the arm. Lower everything together. Lift the right leg, try to keep the legs straight. You're gonna possibly be tempted to bend it or rock the hips, keep the hips centered. Lift the left arm and maybe the head. And lower. Let's march this. Right arm, left leg, lifts. And lower. Left arm, right leg. And keep going. I'm inhaling when I lift. I'm exhaling when I lower. Finish your second side. And then if it's okay, lift both legs, both arms. Maybe you just lift the legs and keep the head down and the arms down. If everything is lifted, bend the elbows, a little row, squeezing the back muscle and extend. Bend like a lat pull down and extend or shoulder. Press my guess. Squeeze those elbows and extend. Squeeze and extend. Squeeze and extend and lower. Turn your head to one side. Rest your head on your hands and maybe windshield wipe the feet if that feels good. Turn the head the other way. And bring your hands interlacing at your lower back. Roll your shoulders onto your shoulder, front of the shoulders, back shoulder blades slide. We know those from our sliding door exercise. You can really feel them. Hands, elbows bend, hands come up to the sacrum plate and they're interlaced. Inhale. As you exhale, lift your legs, straighten your arms so the hands slide down by the butt crack and lift your chest, lift your hands. Nice. Hold. Lift. Lift your feet if you can. And lower. Turn your head, release the hands. That's fun. Let's do it one more time. Interlace the fingers, opposite lacing, hands on the sacrum plate. Shoulder blades on the back, shoulder heads rolling back, forehead to the floor. Inhale. As you exhale, lift up, straighten the arms, lift the legs. Really good. Lift up. Good. Squeeze. Oh. Good. And lower. Release the hands. Breathe for a moment. And bring your forehead to the center, hands by the side of the chest. Spread the fingers out, palms are wide. Roll up into a cobra. Look up and then roll down onto your tummy. Inhale here, exhale, roll up. And roll down. Inhale, one more time, exhale, roll up. Look up, maybe bend the knees, bring the feet toward the head, maybe really not. Push back child, just for a moment, with toes tucked under. If you're moving to down dog, stretch it up and back. Ah, and just enjoy your wide open back, your well-established space for breath, start to Work that Ujjayi breath, lifting pelvic floor, lifting all the bandhas, breathing. Nourishing the body, hydrating the body. 
and then walk your feet to the hands. Inhale, pull the heart through. Exhale, fold, dropping in. Rise and shine. Hips go forward, head goes back, arms up. Hands to heart center. Welcoming yourself upright here. Release the hands down, palms open. Inhale, big breath up as the arms rise. Exhale, dive on down. Inhale, look forward and up. Step left and then right foot back, strong plank bodies. Lower halfway or lower the knees to support you. Upward facing. Legs are strong, knees are up. Roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Animate, really start to squeeze pelvic floor muscles, belly muscles. Nice, strong position here. Breathe through your nose. Try to have your butt lifted on both sides. Good, very good. Inhale, raise your heels. Exhale, bend the knees, walk or jump to your hands, whatever you're feeling. Good, inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold and flow down. Inhale, rise up, circle the arms, arching back, feeling that good morning stretch. Beautiful, hands come to the heart. Karen Shelby's right behind you. Release the hands down, palms open, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, looking up and step back other way. Was it right foot, left foot? Plank, low push up. Inhale, glide through, open the chest. Gorgeous, nice, shoulders back. Exhale, good, down dog, breathe. Pelvic floor working, belly in, throat gently closed. Close it, not like just a little bit. Closed is too strong a word. Get that whisper, light sound moving. Inhale, lift your heels. Exhale, bend the knees, travel forward to your hands. Inhale, look up. Exhale, flush it out, flush toxins out, dropping in. Inhale, rise up and back. All those systems circulating. Gorgeous, hands to the heart. Release the hands down, inhale, circle the arms up. Get that big side body, back body lift. Extension, gorgeous. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, left foot, right foot, plank. Low push up. Inhale, glide through, open your chest. Hallelujah to the sun. Exhale back, downward dog. Beautiful. Stay and breathe. Maybe ASMR is all the kids who were like in their mom's bellies doing the ujjayi, listening to the ujjayi breath. And now ASMR like comforts them. I, 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 whatever that ASMR like gene is, I have it. Like I hear just a little bit and I'm massively affected. Inhale, raise your heels. Exhale, bend the knees, jump or walk forward. Inhale to a long spine. Exhale, forward fold. Chair, bend the knees, raise the arms. Nice. Good, Karen, that looks so strong. That's the best chair ever. I don't know what you're doing, but that's like what I've always wanted your butt to do in that pose. <laughs> All this time, you've, you've landed on it. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up, look up, and step back, right foot, left foot, to low push up. Inhale, glide through, expose that chest. Just do it. Exhale, back, down dog, yes. Right leg up. Good, 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 good. Bend the knee, open up the hip. Just let it get some space in there, some good synovial fluid in there. Oh, it's so good for the back. 
And then square the hips, step forward to warrior one. If that's too intense on your back, stick with crescent lunge, arms up. Mm -hmm. Push the chest forward a little bit. Can you get the arms back and a little bit of a back bend in that upper chest? Yes. Yes. Hands to the ground, low push up. Those were very nice. Inhale, glide through, open it up. Mm -hmm. Exhale, back, downward dog. Very good. Left leg up and bend the knee and open up that hip. Good. Can you get your outer right hip to go back more away from the waist? So not letting that right side collapse. Good. Square the hips and warrior one. Press in if that's better for you. Plug that pinky toe side of the foot into the floor. Communicate with the ground through that part of the foot. Mm -hmm. Lift the chest more here. Try to pull it. Yes, very good. Very, very, very good upper back bends. Good. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready, go down. Good. Low push up. Inhale, cruise on through. Get that beautiful back bend in your upper back. Excellent. And downward dog. Support yourself with your limbs so that spine can really de-age here, getting the plaque off that, off the spine. <clears throat> getting some circulation here so things don't get all sticky and lumpy and toxic. We want the toxins to move through. We want the dead cells to flush out. Mm -hmm. inhale lift the heels bend the knees exhale walk or jump forward inhale look up exhale and fold in chair pose sitting into the legs nice strong squat here excellent excellent good fold forward and release inhale look up and lengthen step or jump back low push up Inhale, slide through, chest opens. Exhale, back, down dog. Gorgeous. Right leg high. Bend the knee, open up your hip. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Crescent lunge, draw the knee toward the chest as you then gracefully plant your foot down. Rise, back heel raised, hips are square. Reach through your chest and arms. Mm -hmm. Can you fill the heart with something that makes it feel lighter? That's really nice. Bring the left hand down to the floor on the inside of the foot, right arm up to the sky for a gentle twist. Try to keep your hip level. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Beautiful. Use your breath and turn. Mm -hmm. Very good. Both hands to the ground. Step back, plank. Low push up. Inhale, glide through, chest open. Shoulders roll back. Good, good. Exhale back, down dog. Nice. Left leg up. Find the support so that leg can truly lift. Good. Then round knee to the chest. Step your left foot through, crescent lunge, rise. What muscles need to be recruited here? Or would how would it help you to recruit? Which ones do you could help benefit you here? Mm -hmm. Nice, good. Good. Can you can your structure help you a bit? Do the feet need to be a little wider? Right hand to the ground, left arm high. Pull that right shoulder blade, slide it into place. There you go. Lift that right hip just a smidge, just a tiny bit, because your booties have collapsed, except carrying your booty looks good. And then turn your right lung up. What about that left shoulder? Can that be more useful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about your right eye? Can you look up with that eyeball? 
Yes. Left hand to the ground, step back, plank, and low push-up. Inhale, glide, open the chest. Wonderful. Exhale, take it back, downward dog. Internal massage using breath. It's a symphony here, being coordinated. And the breath is like the maestro's wand. Inhale, lift your heels, the conductor's wand. Bend the knees, walk or jump to your hands. Inhale, look up. Exhale, flow forward. Bend the knees, chair pose. Good, good, good. Feel that work in the legs, feel that tummy kick on, pelvic floor supports, very good. Fold forward and let go. Inhale, look up, walk or jump back, low push up. Inhale, glide through, open the chest. Beautiful, exhale back, downward dog. Take a deep breath, open your mouth and let out sound. Let out vibration. Ah. Again, inhale, open the mouth. Ha. Ah. Let that vibration happen through your whole body. Come forward to plank. Good. And lower all the way down to the mat. I'm a little bit worried about knees here, so please be mindful. Bend your knees and reach back for your feet. But if this is going to like hurt anybody's knees, knee issues, you're not going to hold with your hands. If, if you can hold with the hands, it's fun. And if you can't, it's still fun. Inhale. As you exhale, lift up here into bow. And kick through those feet. Lift the chest. Good. And if you can, a little rocking chair here, a little hobby horse, forward and back, getting massage on all those really important organs. Oh, three, and a two, and lift, oh, and release. That's juicy. Forehead to the hands, hands are stacked, windshield right to your feet. Hands by the side of the chest, legs long. Push to just a little cobra so you can slide your right leg forward into a half pigeon shape. We're not going to fold forward here. You're going to just stay upright. Think of this as a stretch for the glutes. Head is tilting back toward your butt, facing the ceiling. A nice stretch, and you can make a bulldog underbite, overbite, overbite. Bring that bottom jaw forward or the top teeth. And relax your jaw, bring your head to neutral, shift onto your right glute and bring your left leg forward, like Janu Sirsasana. We're gonna have that right foot in the left inner thigh, face your left inner thigh. Try to keep, you can use your strap here if you want to. Hold your left foot and round. We're actually gonna do this with a rounded back over the left leg. Think of stretching your calf your left calf and hamstrings on that left leg. And if, please modify for the knee or any joints that might hurt. You could put a block underneath the right knee, 
floor under the left knee, or you could sit on the block or a blanket. If forward folds are hurting your back, you can stay upright and do an extended spine instead. Lift up here, we're gonna bring that left leg across into a half pigeon shape, right leg back, and we're gonna stay upright. Think of this being for your glute muscles. Hands are back-ish by the hips. Shoelace side of that right foot down, right knee faces the floor, right knee cap. And a little bit of a cobra here, opening the chest, face to the sky. Beautiful. Good. And Elaine, I'm not sure if you're in a full 90-90, but why not be? Go ahead, like embrace it. Like, organize it because I think that will be therapeutic mm -hmm. no why not and Karen is there a way to be more more up I mean I might be at a weird angle and you may be very up and it just doesn't look it if you can can your hands be back by your butt Maybe like, yeah. Very good. And then swing your right leg forward, left foot into the right inner thigh. So the version I'm doing is I'm facing my right leg and I'm just rounding my back over the leg and I'm concentrating on the right calf, right hamstring. That's what I'm going to do. However, if your back hurts, you may strap the foot, bend the right knee, and be in a much more of a pulling your leg bones into the hip socket dynamic long spine version. Or you could sit up on something to help angle the butt better. This goes ahead, can be used for so many different things. So use it strategically for you. Customize it for whatever you're going, you're working with now. And up we come. Lift your left knee, shake out both legs. Grab your block or legs up the wall. We're gonna do a supported shoulder stand or shoulder stand or legs up the wall. I really want you in an inversion. If you wanna do a headstand, if you have a headstand support system or something, you could do that now too, but briefly, we just really want you upside down. My mom has one of those like sort of U-shaped things that you can do, stick your head there and do a headstand. And if you don't want pressure on your neck, those are really good. I think they make them, you can find them for not too much money. I mean, you can just do them with chairs too. I could, if you guys want to learn how to do that, just let me know. I'll show you sometime, make a little video. Um, you can just do it with chairs and put your shoulders on the chair and your head between, but it's not quite as safe or as easy. Um, or just do headstand regularly, but for a lot of people that might be not great for their necks. Um, this didn't say anything about how I got into this. So the block is under my sacrum and my legs are elevated and my chest is basically in bridge pose. My chest is really open. If you are in shoulder uh, headstand, please make sure your 
Lifting your shoulders away from your ears so that they're facing you. Give our organs a chance to bathe in this direction, to strengthen it in this direction. Let the fluids recirculate. There's a way to let the tension out of your neck even more. Do it. Soften your belly, even deepen your belly. Do it. Depending where you are, slowly come down into what makes sense. So I'm in supported shoulder stand. I'm going to come down into supported bridge. If you're in headstand, take child pose and then come into bridge. We'll all meet up in some form of bridge, supported or unsupported. Either way, it's a great way to release the shoulders and neck. It's a great path. Counter pose to headstand and a transition from shoulder stand. What I like about the supported version is it's an opportunity for my hip flexors to lengthen out. Which will help you if you have back pain. It will help you if you have a short stride and you really want to feel as though your legs are longer, or you're taking longer steps into the world, or you want to use your belly more dynamically. Hip flexors need to be able to both release and contract. Usually they do one or the other. Well, and not the other. Take the block out if you're resting on it and just hold bridge for a moment using your glutes. Let's pump those things. Let's get those glutes nice and strong here. Shapely 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Squeeze that butt and down. Uh, you come, please come down really slowly, lovingly to the floor. Okay, good. Let your feet come together, your knees apart. Sukta Baddha Konasana. Place a hand on your belly and one over your heart. Breathe. This may feel strange, sort of vulnerable right now. So notice any emotions, any sense of feeling, felt sense that's coming up. And it, it may not, you may not have to describe that kind of those kind of 
top level thoughts. Maybe it's mm -hmm. just your nervous system feels jittery or your nervous system feels something. Can you attend to your nervous system with awareness, not trying to change it or negate it or neglect it, just awareness, breath, and presence. Being present to what is arising. Easier said than done. Slowly straighten the legs. Roll them in and out. Hands still and heart please. Hands still in the belly. So you're staying with yourself. And slowly begin to move the arms back behind you and stretch here, reaching out through legs and arms, feeling the plasticity that's being demonstrated in the body. And through this demonstration, we have some knowledge that our brain is also a little more open, a little more plastic. There's a little more space for growth and change, thank God. And then snow angel your arms down, lovingly placing your shoulder blades onto your back so they, they lay there flat. And then smooth your whole, kind of smush your whole self down to the floor a little bit more. Make some micro adjustments if they're needed. And take a big inhale. At the top of your inhale, when you get there, breathe in more. Hold. Exhale, make a loud sigh as you breathe out the mouth. Ha ah, ha. Ah. Probably like five layers of evil, e evil, ego, ego, evil, whatever, dissolve. Take a deep breath in. Inhale more. If there's any more, inhale, take it, hold. And then a big sigh out the mouth. <sighs> Ah. One more time, take a deep, deep breath in. Breathe in more, sip in more through that gas tank of the nose. Fill her up. Hold. And exhale out the mouth. Ah. Letting go. Depending on how your nervous system, how your limbic self, your reptilian sort of self, your sense of safety, I guess, feels, you can choose whether or not to stay present with yourself, or to really let go. Letting the front body fall into the back body. The back body fall into the earth.
that if your general sense of safety isn't comfortable with letting go, perhaps you just stay present to the mantra of the breath. Do you let your thoughts release thousands of helium balloons just let them go? If there's a fear or something that arises, simply meet it and let it go, let it wash through. There's a joyous event that arises, same instruction, noticing and letting go, not holding on. Allowing our software to update. Take a deep breath here. And exhale. Again, deep breath in. And exhale. Take a deep breath in. The next exhale, find your yawn and your stretch. Draw your left knee toward your body, roll to your right, and cuddle into a fetal ball, and send your breath strategically, lovingly into your back. Connecting to the purity of the back body. Oh, in a frequency. Allow it to come in through the back. Maybe it's peace. Peace, love, whatever it is. Patience. And then use your left hand to make your way on up. So we sit up, we begin the process of integration. We want to move slowly, not take it for granted. Software update might have some new little tips and tricks to it. So we want to just arise with care. We are more in alignment. We are, our antennas are more attuned. Our awareness is heightened. And this is a superpower. 
you're tuned to your own frequency, your own station. Make space for God. Make space for wisdom. Reach the hands up. Bring that prayer together. Let it move over your forehead, over all these gifts, lips, throat, landing in your own heart. And let the song of your heart penetrate every cell. Inhale. Oh. Thumbs rise to the third eye center. Trust your own inner knowing, your own inner vision. Trust your own inner navigational system. Again, you want to set your own course today. So where do you want to go? Bowing forward to one another. May you know peace. May you live with ease. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day and week. We'll see you guys soon. Love you.